grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I know that as you came in, uh, you expected to receive an outline of today's message. Uh, and actually the outline of the message is right in the text. Uh, so I would invite you to open your Bibles to Jeremiah uh, chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31, uh, which was uh, in our Old Testament reading for this morning. And I would like to back up a little bit and talk a little bit about chapter 31. Chapter 31 of Jeremiah is a restoration chapter. It's the chapter in which Jeremiah is encouraging the Jews uh, that they will be restored. They're going to be restored and Jerusalem's going to be restored. And God is going to keep His promises to His people Israel. Even though they have sinned and been crushed for their sin, destroyed for their sin, just as God promised they would do in the book of Deuteronomy if they did not keep His commands. And so Jeremiah is telling them that God is going to do something. He says three times in this text, Behold, the days are coming, or behold, the Lord's going to do something. Three times he says this in the text. <coughs> now, in this particular instance, we want to talk about what the role of the prophet is. The role of the prophet is threefold. The role of the prophet is to proclaim, proclaim what God has done, has done and is doing. What God will do as a result of or on the testimony of what He has done. That is what He will do in the near future, in the near time, within the days of the people to whom the prophet is speaking. And then he is to speak to the far future. The third is to speak to the far future. Where God will in fact ultimately restore his people. He will ultimately do what he said he will do. And it will be an eternal kingdom and eternal reality. An eternal Israel. Not just an Israel that lasts for a little time or as a political entity. But an eternal time. And so that's what the prophet is doing here. What God has done, what God is doing on the basis of what, how we have trusted Him in the past, and what God will do in the near term and far term. And there, I'm going to pick up with verse 24 and read the text. Verse 24 of the text. And Judah and all his cities shall dwell together, and the farmers and those who wander their flocks. For I, have, for I will satisfy the weary soul, and every languishing soul will be replenished. At this I awoke. So this is the end of his, his vision. And he awoke from this. And my sleep was pleasant to me because it was a great time of restoration. So Judah is going to be restored. Israel is going to be restored. Behold, the days are coming. Now here comes what he's going to talk about the near and far. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will sow, sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seeds of man and the seeds of beast. In other words, your population is going to increase, your animals are going to increase, and it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down what happened in the past because they disobeyed the law, to overthrow and to destroy, that is to take them off into bondage in Babylon and bring harm, so... So, behold, so, I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. To build and to plant. In those days, they shall no longer say, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. That is, there'll be no more of this bondage, there'll be no more of this bitter life. But everyone shall die for his own sin. In other words, the whole nation is now not going to be condemned for the sin of its leadership or for the sin just of a few. Uh, the sins of the father will not be visited upon the children with such devastation. Each man who eats sour grapes, his teeth will be set on edge. That is, he'll be responsible for his own sin. So what is he talking about here? There's a time coming. There's a time coming when God is going to deal with people where they are in their relationship with Him. Where they are in their relationship with Him. 
as it said in, he, in the Hebrew text, that high priest, Jesus who is declared high priest forever, is in the order of Melchizedek. He is the one who will supply the righteousness forever. Whew. And then he says in 31, which was our text, Behold, the days are coming. Now, so he said, he said, Behold, this is what happened in the past when you disobeyed. Behold, this is what is coming. Uh, the restoration of Israel and of Judah back out of Babylon into Jerusalem again under Ezra and Nehemiah and the several uh, uh, immigrations back into, into Jerusalem. And now he's saying the new covenant. This is going to be something new. This is the far thing. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord. Now, if the Lord declares something, it's going to happen. These days are not right now. When Jeremiah is writing this, they're not the days he's talking about. There's not the days he's living in. They're not even the near days when, under Ezra and Nehemiah, the people come back to Jerusalem. When they rebuild the temple and rededicate it. When they build the walls of Jerusalem again. That's not the, the days he's talking about. He's talking about the far days now. <clears throat> I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day that I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant they broke, though I was a husband, declares the Lord. So it's not going to be the old covenant. What God is going to do is something new. And it won't be the old one. This is something that's going to happen out there. Out there from the days of, Isaiah, uh, of Jeremiah and these people. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel in those days. What days? The days that are coming, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. And I will write it on their hearts. Where, did the, where was the law? The law was in the scrolls that had been uh, uh, copied and copied and copied by, by the scribes. By the scribes. But he said, no, it's going to be in your heart. It's not going to be inscribed on these scrolls anymore. It's not going to be on stone tablets coming down from the mountain on high. It's going to be in your heart. Now that's a covenant. That's a covenant that is made with you and you and me, each of you, in your heart. As I spoke to the children about by the power of their baptism, about the power of their faith, about the Holy Spirit putting in them the life of Jesus Christ, the way of Christ into them and into each of us by faith. So this is a new covenant, not like the old one. I will put it within their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. That people in those days that are coming are going to be the people of God. Not the people under the old covenant that they broke, but the people under this new covenant, which is a covenant in the flesh of Jesus Christ. And no longer shall one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, I know the Lord, for they shall all know me. In other words, in that community, in that community, there's no need to, to, to talk about how I know the Lord and you know the Lord. The need is for us to tell others about the Lord. As I told the children, to be able by their action to reveal what is in them. Who has put his mark in their life. From the last, least of them to the greatest declares the Lord, they shall know me. It's not a matter of education. It's not a matter of status in the community. It's not a matter of your job or how famous you are. It doesn't matter. All that matters is it has been written on your heart and you have come to live under that new covenant. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. This is the day where forgiveness of sin is assured and God has assured us in this covenant which according to Hebrews again, was in Christ Jesus, in the body of Christ, in a tent not made by men, that in His body He has provided for you and me this salvation. And this, thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for light by day, who has fixed the order of the moon and the stars and the light of night, 
who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is His name. In other words, you see all this great creation that God has done, how He has ordered it. He's the one making this promise. If this fixed order departs from before me, declares the Lord, then shall the offspring of Israel cease from being a nation before me forever. That is, being the nation that He has called on this new covenant. This new people under this new covenant. Thus says the Lord, if the heavens above can be measured, and we, and we know you can't measure it. I mean, people estimate how big the heavens are, but we don't know. We're just estimating. And every time they send a satellite out that goes even further out into space with a huge telescope on it, and it looks, they still can't see the end. They still don't think they've seen the end of it. So how do you measure that? How do you measure that? It shall, the offspring of, of God, those who have under this covenant in Christ will be forever. Thus says the Lord, if the heavens can be measured and the foundation of the earth below can be explored, then I will cast off the offspring of Israel for that day, for all that they have done, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the city will be rebuilt. And we know in the book of Revelation of the New Jerusalem. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the one who has fulfilled this new covenant. Jesus said to, his, uh, said to the uh, scribes and Pharisees in the fifth chapter of John, you search the scriptures, believing in them that you have life. The, Jeremiah here is talking about life, but he's talking about a life that never ceases. He's, he's, he's basing it upon a, a world whose foundations cannot be uh, 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 ferreted out. A world whose heavens cannot be measured. A universe that nobody knows the expanse of. He says that's how great God is. And if the God who did that has promised you that you will have life in Him, in this new covenant, in His Son Jesus Christ, which we know by faith, then He says, in fact, God's word is sure. And Jeremiah is telling us this, that this is what he has promised. To give us a hope and a future that is in God, not in us. Not in anything we can do, but only what God has done. And he will, in fact, build a city that will have a foundation that will last forever. The city that Ezra and Nehemiah came back and built was destroyed. If you go to Jerusalem today, all you can see, the only walls you see uh, around uh, the city of Jerusalem is the one that, is, that was uh, done by, by Solomon, the Magnificent. That's the only walls that are there. There are still a few of the walls that are uh, there, uh, remnants like of the western wall of the temple and that sort of thing. All the gates had to be rebuilt. All of them. That's not the city. It's the city of His people who are called by His name. Who are called by His name. And so our vocation now, our vocation in the world today, is that we speak of that city. That we speak of that relationship. The relationship that was established between us and God by the person of Jesus Christ. Who by His precious blood has washed away sin as we have sung in our hymns today. He is the one who is the foundation stone of that city on which we build. So our vocation now is to bring that message to the world. To bring that message to the world. And our coming together here is an encouragement for that. We come here to encourage one another in that very task of being a, a projection in the world of the mercy, grace, and love of God through Jesus Christ by our own vocation in the world. You are called to that today. One of the things that uh, Dr. Rausch has committed himself to over the last about eight years now uh, in India is to go once a year to do a dental camp at our mission hospital in Chirala. And he does a dental camp there usually for a couple of weeks. Sees how many patients you usually see, Dr. Rausch? In that, 800 patients? 800 patients? 80 a day. 80 a day for 10 days. You add it up. <laughs> how many patients he sees. And, uh, and helps them. And then he goes back a second time in the year uh, in order to do evangelism. And uh, what he's going to do today is share with us his evangelism trip 
Uh, in particular, where he was working with uh, uh, Pastor Solomon uh, Ronaka, who is uh, supported by our uh, uh, children, or partially supported by our children here at the preschool. So at this point, I will simply turn it over then to Dr. Roush.